forward to NCAA regional final action on ESPNU the rest of the afternoon and evening. The first from the Dayton Regional. And we welcome you inside our ESPN News Studios with you all afternoon and evening. I'm Kara Capuano, joined by former Butler middle blocker Elizabeth Moreau. We are looking forward to four straight NCAA regional finals. We start with the Dayton Regional, a couple of Pac-10 teams squaring off in Dayton, Ohio. Yes, you heard that correctly. It's the three-seed Stanford taking on Southern California in the first of our four matchups. Four Pac-10 teams remaining in the field. California and Washington also playing later tonight. What do you expect from what is going to be now the third matchup of the season between Stanford and Southern California, Elizabeth? Well, I think it's not going to be as easy for Stanford as it was in the last two matches to beat USC. This USC team is young, they're tough, they're athletic, they're going to come out wanting to win. I think what you said about being far away from home is going to be hard for both teams. It's going to be hard for them to ramp up the energy, but with the opportunity to play for a national title on the line and knowing how strong the Pac-10 is in volleyball. I think we're going to be ready to kick off with a strong match. Alex Jupiter will lead it for USC. <laughs> Don't be left behind. Get it first with AT&T, the nation's fastest mobile broadband network, period. Rethink possible. This is Dr. Love. And this is Dr. Pepper Cherry. It's got a little kiss of cherry flavor. You want cherry? How about a little kiss? Trust me, I'm a doctor. Is she awake? Just fell asleep. Why are you up? It's 2 a.m. It's not just 2 a.m. It's 2 a.m. Christmas morning. It's our first Christmas as a family. I couldn't wait. Levion Jewelry, featuring Levion Chocolate Diamonds. Levion, one more reason K is the number one jewelry store in America. You think she'll remember this Christmas? I know I will. Every kiss begins with K. rematch of a regular season series. I'm Holly Rowe along with Krista Blunk. And Krista, these two teams met twice in the regular season. Stanford won both of those matches and in large part behind the arm of their Pac-10 Player of the Year, Alex Kleinman. She had 42 kills in those two matches. Yeah, what a presence Alex Kleinman brings when she is out on the floor. She's the kind of player that will change the other team's defenses. And she can hit above any block with a variety of shots. With those options, it causes major problems for the defense. She's just a different level of player. Now for USC, they've got a lot of talented freshmen in the lineup, but their offense will have to revolve around Alex Jupiter, a junior outside hitter. She had 19 kills in that first meeting against Stanford. Yeah, USC, a very young team. They have to rely on their veteran, and Alex Jupiter is that player. She struggled a little the past couple of years with her timing, but not this season. She has been on explosive quickness that allows her to get the shot she wants before the defense can get itself set. USC.
the year in the Pac-10. She'll also be joined by freshman middle blocker Alexis Olgard and the libero Natalie Haglin, also a freshman, getting major action for USC. They are led by Mick Haley in his 10th season. He has two national championships with the Trojans, but it's been a while. They are anxious to get back in the mix. Stanford, on the other hand, is powered by three seniors. We told you about Player of the Year, Alex Kleinman, but they really rely on their setter, Cassidy Lickman. She does a little bit of everything for them. And then Gabby Ailes, their libero, one of the best in the country, and working her way up those career charts in the Pac-10 at that position. Led by John Dunning, 10th season as the Stanford head coach. He's got two titles at Stanford. He won two at Pacific. And we're underway. And right off the bat, USC on the serve gets on the scoreboard. Well, Holly, Mick Haley told us that his team had to make some adjustments. Two losses in the regular season to Stanford. Something has to change. A lot of that will be on the defensive side. Kendall Bateman, the service for USC. And Kleinman finds the back line. One of the things that USC is going to try to do against Alex Kleinman, number, Klein, three, number three, 10 right three, there, they are going to try to play more of what you think of as a zone defense. They're going to try to back out a little bit and not move so much. So Carly Wopat, a talented freshman for Stanford with a very fierce jump serve, and you see it there. The middle attack read by Stanford. And here's Kleinman again. These teams very familiar with each other. As you can see by this extended rally right off the bat. Jupiter blocked. Tries to change it up and maybe thinking too much on that one. Yeah, that can happen at times. You know, maybe some jitters here early on, but there's so much at stake for both of these teams. And I think the, the toughest thing is that both teams do know each other so well. 6-2 freshman out of California, and Carly has that great jump serve we noticed yesterday in their match against Ohio State. Very effective. Overpass, there's a 6-6. Haley Spellman gets the point for the Cardinal, imposing at the net. What a presence from her up at the net, and the lefty on top of it, which just can throw you off a little bit more if you're going at her. Remember, in this first set, it is rally scoring, point for play. Go to 25, or you have to win by two. It is the best of five sets, and the final set will be to 15. We talked about Carly Wopat, the freshman, and her serve. Check out that top spin, causing problems for Stanford. And Mick Haley for USC said this match will come down to serve and pass. And right now, it's going Stanford's way. Jupiter outside gets the point, and the service back for USC. That's what Alex USC has to have. They've got to get the Alex pass. Jupiter. They've got to get it to their main go-to right there, Alex Jupiter. Jupiter, out of Paris, France, came to the U.S. as she served long. Primarily to be a beach volleyball player. She's ended up playing indoors more and more, and Coach McKaylee told us today she's finally this season really making that adjustment. Yeah, big adjustment to go from beach, beach play to the hard court, and it has been a struggle for her, very inconsistent, but not this year. Now into the match for Stanford, Carissa Cook on that serve. Back set, and here's Lickman. This is that 6-2 offense, two setters in the match for Stanford, and that time Carissa Cook with the back set to Walter Walker. Stanford runs the 6-2, as you mentioned, Cook is in. You just don't expect Lickman then to be coming at you with the big arm, their other setter, but she's out there and she's got quite a quick arm. Cook with the service there, gets the side out back to USC. And here's that freshman libero we told you about, Haley telling us today that the thing he loves about Natalie Hagman is that she competes. She is a championship surfer, won a championship in high school, and she competes at everything. Kleinman rolls it over. You can tell these two teams so familiar with each other early on. Inside for Flynn Moana. Flynn Moana, a lot of pressure on this player coming in. The number one player nationally for prep volleyball. And a big adjustment too, just the balance of Division I volleyball at this level and then the college grades. There she is again, and she gets the point again. She was a little shaky yesterday in their match 
against Indiana. Got off to a bit of a slow start. Just eight kills and hit only 167. But she's come off to a hot start here. And that's going to make Stanford defend much differently. Yeah, got that first match under her belt here in her first regional as a freshman. Stanford leads by one. Here she is again, the fab freshman. Third straight kill for Noe Morana. Pac-10 freshman of the year. She'd love to make it to the next round. And that's an important one, the national championship in Kansas City. USC's been there four times at the championship. Stanford has been there three of the last four years, but have not yet won it. They've struggled to get past Penn State. Here's Lickman with the set to Kleinman, who finds the angle. And that was a smart decision by Alex Kleinman. She read the block perfectly. She was able to get that point. She read the block, took something off of it, got a nice cut on that one, straight down. Kleinman out of Manhattan Beach, California, the academic All-American of the Year, voted on by ESPN Magazine and the Cosida directors. Yeah. She gets the service ace. Aces is everything. Aces is everything. She really does. I mean, the accolades just keep going for Alex Kleiman. And I don't think we talk about the academics enough. Both of these teams had to come in. They all had finals. They had to come in in two different shifts, different players coming at different times. There's a lot that goes on for these student athletes. So Stanford yet to find an answer. Four straight kills for Full Moyana. Fanoi Moana, sorry. It doesn't roll off the tongue as easily. I think we'll go with Fallon, her first name, most of the way, but you're right. And we're going to be 13. saying this for a long time, just a freshman for USC. And she has seen what she needs to do, working on things. And there's that two-setter rotation there, and it's so interesting. Cook sets the other setter, Cassidy Lickman, who gets the kill. What a dynamic, and they've both adapted to their roles so easily. Here's Fanoi Moana getting ready to receive. She's become a better defender. Stanford still struggling, struggling to find a way to defend her. Again, outside, gets it. And Holly, every time Fanoi Moana, she just keeps going. 100% until the block for Stanford can figure out a way to stop her. She's not going to change it up. That's a freshman she's going one-on-one -on -one against. And Rachel Williams has got to do a better job there. Triple block for USC. And boy, back and forth. Stanford was up by three. USC made a four-point run. And now we are all tied up at nine apiece. Just a perfect read by USC on that block. They were just waiting for Lickman in the middle. That one was easy, the little tap across from Alexis Olgard, another one of those talented freshmen. But Fanoi Moana, excuse me, <laughs> Fanoi Moana doing a terrific job here pacing USC. And I, I wonder if Stanford was expecting this so early in this match. Uh, Mick Haley for USC said he wasn't sure if he was going to have Fallon serving in this one because she's got the top spin. And Stanford typically is a team that can receive the top spin serves very well. But right now, Benoit Moana doing an excellent job with the top spin serve. Right down the pipe from the other freshman, Kylie Wolpat. Stanford service back. Well, that serve went right to Gabby Ells, the libero for Stanford, all time leader in digs. And that's the perfect pass, perfect set. And that's why Stanford gets it back. Cassidy Lickman on the serve for Stanford. And Jupiter. She was uh, active early before the Moana got active and got so many weapons on this USC team. Now in Gina Urango, senior out of Los Alamitos, California. With the service error. And Holly, for USC, we talked about Alex Jupiter and how she was going to have to be a big impact player. But you got to take some pressure off her. And right now, USC has done that going to Fanoi Moana so often. You've got to mix it up, and they're doing that. Sophomore Hannah Benjamin checks into the match. Service expert for them. Jupiter gets it inside. So two straight kills for Alex Jupiter. And USC showing some real firepower jumps out to a two-point lead here in set one. 
Kendall Bateman, the setter for USC, now on the serve. Oh, back down the middle. And USC's defense had slowed that middle option down the last couple of times, but not this time. And John Dunning, the head coach for Stanford, told us the middle will be the key for his team, and they're going to keep going to the middle as often as they can. This middle set is read by the Stanford block as Walker and Spellman getting up on the combo. They'll tie it up at 13. out of system. Kleinman. Back to Kleinman and this time gets the kill. Alex Kleinman is above the both blockers there for the double block and here we'll see it. And this is why she's able to do what she does. You've got to at least get a tip on this. You're not going to completely block it straight back to her, but if you can tip that and slow it down, you've got a chance. And that's the risk reward of that aggressive serve from Carly Wopat. 22 service aces on the season, but 32 service errors make that 33 now in USC. But things tied has a chance. Tip from 6-6 six, six to see USC. They've played twice this season, but not for more than this. They're trying to get a ticket to Kansas City to play for this, the national championship trophy. Stanford leads USC by one in the first set. People who have been diagnosed with mesothelioma have many questions. How did I get this disease? What are my treatment options? How will this affect my loved ones? You need answers, which is why we offer a free book written by medical professionals who have treated mesothelioma. Call toll-free 1-888-888-3231 or go to freemesobook.com. There's no obligation, so call toll-free at 1-888-888-3231. Enjoy everything the XPS offers. Download, chat, and stream on the go with Verizon Wireless Mobile Broadband built in. Order a Dell XPS laptop and get a free mobile broadband card plus a $100 credit when you sign up with Verizon Wireless. You can tell it's a great deal. You can tell it's Dell. The NCAA Women's Volleyball Regional Finals is presented by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. We'll pick you up and in part by Wendy's. Tune in Sunday, December 12th at 9 p.m. for the Wendy's High School Heisman presentation on ESPNU. We are here at the University of Dayton, the site for the first regional final. There will be four today, but John Dunning, who has been experienced in NCAA play, won two national championships in his six seasons at Pacific, nine years at Stanford, already two titles, fourth in volleyball history. And Holly, John Dunning's the only coach to win championships at two different programs in his first season. So he goes to Pacific, wins the championship first year, heads over to Stanford, does the very same thing. Man knows how to coach, and Stanford showing it here with a two-point lead in the first set over USC. Krista Cook, the second setter, back in. And a one-on-one -on -one block from Walker. She's heavily banded. She's got a big tape on the left arm, the left leg, but she's effective there. Yep, but they said, no worries. She's out there. She's been taped up all season long, and now I think now it's just a superstition. back, but they are there. Stanford's defense. Back row Jupiter. And here's Kleinman. Great dig from Ailes. What a rally. Kleinman outside. Finishes it for the Stanford Cardinals. What a rally. 
from both of these teams. But for USC, the double block got up against Alex Kleiman two different times earlier and got the tip, but not on the third try. They were able to slow it down and stay in it, but not that third time. The block couldn't get there. Four-point run by Stanford has them up 18-14. Kleinman pacing the way with four kills as the Cardinal on top. Are you ready? I'm ready. John, your car is here. Go get him, Tiger. When you're hitting the road for business, good luck. Enterprise will pick you up and get you on the road to success. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. AT&T introduces a new Windows phone. Wow. With stage presence. Yeah. Now get an HTC surround for $199.99 and get one free. Only from AT&T. Rethink possible. The Premier Rewards Gold Card from American Express is designed to be brilliant. It's the only charge card to earn triple points on airfare, double points on gas and groceries, a single point on everything else. Points you can use for over a million rewards, including travel on any airline, anytime. The annual fee for the first year is on us, and you can earn 10,000 bonus points with your first purchase. Start earning brilliantly. Call 1-800-297-5100 or visit axpgold.com slash learn more to apply. Welcome back to Dayton University for a regional final. A trip to the championship round is on the line. Nick Haley calling a timeout after Stanford ran off four straight points. An experienced coach, nine years at USC, two national championships, and he also has a gold medal. Felt the time was necessary to regroup right there for Stanford or for USC. He has that instinct. Both of these coaches are such smart coaches. They will do every single thing that they can do. And they know there's a point where it's out of their hands, but they, if they know they can make a change, they will make it happen. Katie Fuller outside the pin. And here's Cook to serve again for Stanford. Five straight points for the Cardinal. Can Fuller end it? And she does. Katie Fuller, the 6'2 sophomore for USC. This is a player, number 22. You don't always think about her, and that's a player that USC has to get involved. They take that timeout, and they say, let's get the offense moving around to multiple, multiple hitters. Walker goes angle on that one. Beautiful elevation from Walker. So deceptive as well. She was just sort of lingering. You weren't quite sure if she was going to slide around. And you also have to give some credit to Cassidy Lickman, their senior setter. She's a very deceptive setter, and she really set that up. Lyman on the serve. Off the block. And the Trojans keep sticking around. Hitting very well here early. Stanford, USC was hot early. Struggled a little bit of late, but getting back into it with that swing. Both teams close to 400 hitting. The hitting percentage, very similar in baseball. Your goal is to be up around the 300 area, and if you get up to 400, you are doing something. Here's a chance for Stanford. Outside, Williams. On the overpass, Walker again in the middle. Jessica Walker, a sophomore out of Houston, Texas. What a story. She's only played in half of the sets this season, just 50, but she is red hot in the postseason. Definitely a player that you don't always think of, but as of late has put it together. Sometimes that's all it takes, enough repetition for a freshman, and the light switch finally goes on. Off the fingertips of the block. Anoy Moana into the net. Point, Cardinal. Three service errors yes, for her Great. yesterday yes, in her yes, match. Yes, yes, yes. Struggled a little bit to kind of get going, but she has been on fire to start out this one. Some are calling her a player of a lifetime. One of the most highly recruited players in the country. Chose USC. And Jupiter Point, wide Cardinal. on that hit. USC, calls. USC uh -oh. calling another timeout, trying to regroup before Stanford finishes off set one. They lead at 
Here's a look at what's coming up the rest of the day. Nine hours of college volleyball on ESPNU. And here's a look. Penn State taking on Duke. Duke trying to be the first ACC in team into the national championship semifinal in history. What do you see in that Penn State regional? Well, and for Duke, it would be their first national semifinal. And so, you know, there'll be some jitters, especially against a Penn State team playing at home. A team that lost a couple of All-Americans, you think maybe they're going to struggle a little bit this year? Not the case whatsoever. They get one of the top seeds. They're playing at home, and they got a player named Blair Brown, and she's pretty good. Blair Brown, Big Ten Player of the Year, had a terrific match. 24 kills yesterday in their regional semifinal. And the Penn State Nittany Lions, you might remember, they went on that 109 match winning streak, one of the longest in college sports history. And it was the Stanford Cardinal, the team you're seeing right here, that upset them this season. Earlier what this year, a major upset, 109 matches in a row for Penn State. What a, an amazing task. And for Duke to have to go to Penn State, it will not be easy. But they would love to get their first trip to the national semis. Ellie Cadenac has been the person behind the wheel for the Blue Devils. She has been terrific ACC player of the year, but she will have to do it on the Nittany Lions home court. Beth Mullins alongside Karch Karai to get you set up on that action. To the net, pays off for USC. A timeout leads to a score for USC. Nick Haley has great timing. You know when to let his team kind of play through some struggles and when to take a break. Talk it over. Ringo on the serve. Oh, tight to the net and Stanford in all kinds of trouble. Jupiter puts it away. That set was a little bit behind Alex Jupiter, but she was up there, had the hang time, readjusted, and got the angle. Three kills for Jupiter. Hasn't been as efficient, hitting just 222, but still they've gone to her, really mixing it up. They went some middle, tried to establish their outside to the pins, and that seems to be working right now for USC as they've staved off Sanford. It was 23-17. Two timeouts, and USC has come back with two straight points. Well, ESPN, the home court of College Hoops, the action continues Sunday afternoon on ESPNU, a double header. First at noon, Appalachian State takes on the Georgetown Hoyas with their all-star, Austin Freeman. And then at 2 Eastern, Corey Fisher and the number 12 Villanova Wildcats face LaSalle. That's college basketball on ESPNU coming up on Sunday. Well, Penn State made so much national news. I loved it how it, it trickled over into other sports. People were paying attention to college volleyball. How did that affect the world of, of sports? Yeah, you know, I think it was a big plus for college volleyball in particular and for our women of women's sport. I think it was spectacular what they were able to do, and it's going to be very difficult for anybody to even get close to that. But there's other win streaks out there. They were right up there, and only the men's tennis program from Miami with 137 above them. UConn's women still roll with 87 going strong. That's right. We're here in Ohio. Their next game is going to be against Ohio State in Madison Square Garden. Gentile Lavender might have something to say about that UConn win streak and if it continues. Ohio State uh, got past Oklahoma. Very nice win for the Buckeyes last week. So Stanford trying to close things out, but USC sticking around two straight points. And an unforced error that time by... Durango, that's very difficult in that situation. They can't afford mistakes like that. And now here we are at set point. Stanford just a point away from closing this out. And Holly, that's the difference of this match so far. Little errors here and there that USC have, have added up here late here in set one. Jupiter on the outside. Middle, Lopat mistimes it. Jupiter again uses the block. And they live to fight another point. point still down by four. Set point third off, serving for the Trojans, number 12, Kendall Bateman. Been a little bit of a slow start for Alex Jupiter, but as you mentioned too, they had multiple scorers out there for USC, and that's what it's going to take. Outside, there's the 6 6 Spellman. She's a lefty. Jupiter mixes it up, this time with the roll. Stay low, stay low. Spellman again. Back and forth. Stay low. Kleinman blocked. The joust over the net, and the Cardinal hold on on the rally. They win the set 
20. And it's so amazing. At some points in these rallies, you almost forget your player of the year is out on the left side, Alex Kleinman, but she was able to put that away. Stanford beat USC twice in the regular season, and they're up one set to nothing here in the regional final, a trip to the national championship on the line. It's Pizza Hut's Cheesy Bites Pizza. Your favorite Pizza Hut pizza surrounded by 28 cheese-filled bites. Now just $11.99. Add breadsticks and a 2-liter Pepsi for just 5 bucks more. The Cheesy Bites Pizza. Only $11.99 and only at your Pizza Hut. Rated M for Mature. There's only one vehicle tough enough to play in this world. The 2011 Jeep Wrangler Call of Duty Black Ops Edition. With a redesigned interior, the new Jeep Wrangler remains one tough 4x4. The Premier Rewards Gold Card from American Express is designed to be brilliant. It's the only charge card to earn triple points on airfare, double points on gas and groceries, a single point on everything else. Points you can use for over a million rewards, including travel on any airline, anytime. The annual fee for the first year is on us, and you can earn 10,000 bonus points with your first purchase. Start earning brilliantly. Call 1-800-297-5100 or visit axpgold.com slash learn more to apply. If you suspect your teen is using a cell phone to connect to drugs, don't ignore the signs. Go to the partnership at drugfree.org. The official online store at NCAA.com is the number one stop to get NCAA merchandise. With over 100,000 items, you'll find all the college gear you need in one place. You'll find the best selection, great customer service, and fast three-day shipping for only $4.99. You'll also get an easy and enjoyable experience designed to help you find exactly what you're looking for. So for the best in college gear, head to the official online store at NCAA.com. Welcome back to the University of Dayton in Dayton, Ohio. First of four regional finals, the NCAA Women's Volleyball Regional Finals presented by Enterprise Rental Cars. Stanford coming out on top 25-20 in set one. And it was really the story of Kleinman, the player of the year in the Pac-10, getting it done. She has been the problem for USC all season long. They were going to try to make some defensive adjustments, but she's serving well. She's definitely hitting well. And that is so tough if you're USC to try to stop because she gets above the block and just leaves openings for her. She's got four kills already in this one, hitting 308. So close on these statistics in that first set, but really the story is mistakes by USC. It's really down to some service errors, a couple more hitting errors, and that's really your match so far. Both teams have been hitting pretty well, and as of late, though, it's just been Stanford with a few more kills. Anna Benjamin stays in, serving for the Cardinal. It's the touch of the net. It's Spellman. He was terrific in that first match. And really, one of the reasons Kleinman was so effective is they spread the wealth. She had some help. You have to do that because there's so much focus on a player like Alex Kleinman. You have to get other people involved. Look inside from Lauren Williams out of Houston, Texas. She's been quiet. Hadn't really talked about her. She's got that long wingspan. She decides to go to the middle one-on-one. -on -one. It's not an easy matchup with her because I think it was Kleinman there with her. Spellman again really starting to come on. 6'6", six, six, lefty. That is so hard to see and block. The improvements that this player has made, she's just waiting over there, but you're right. That left-handed hit, you can see the block, the double block not getting there in time, and Spellman able to finish. Low pat on the jump serve. Outside, Jupiter. And just like that, we're 2-2, two, two, back and forth. These teams so evenly matched. You know, we talked about USC losing to Stanford twice in the regular season, but USC beat Cal, the co-champs, 
of the Pac-10 twice this season. The only team in the country to do that. Yeah, it comes down to matchups, Holly. It really is all about, there are just sometimes teams that you just don't match up well against. And for USC this year, it was Stanford. And for Stanford, it was Cal. Kleinman has something to do with that. Watch this approach. That's the way you want the system to be going. You want that perfect set. You want her to be able to get back to where she likes to start. Get that full arm swing. Carissa Cook on the serve. Katie Fuller, she was effective in that first set. They've got to get her going. A sophomore out of California. Seven kills yesterday against Indiana. Gives them some size as well. And this is a USC team that has 10 players that are six foot two or taller. So they've got quite the presence up at the net. Walker scores for Stanford. Alex Kleinman had had all three points, but Walker finally getting in on the action. Jessica Walker, number 17. She's been getting more and more play after the loss of Stephanie Brown. The 6'4 junior middle blocker went out with the ACL against UCLA this past Pac-10 season. And they had to make some adjustments, and Walker has fit right in. Down the pipe. But nice defense there from Bateman. Too much power for the freshman for Stanford. Talk about how well these two teams know one another, and both coaches said, you know, they're going to try to do a little something, and then we'll try to do a little something. And these matches are all different, though, right now. It's a whole different season when you get into tournament play. Stanford on the point with the wide swing from USC. Bateman speaking to the tower official saying, hey, I thought there was some obstruction in the net, that they were in the net. She wanted Make to Haley's up as well. Find out if it was out before the net violation, and apparently they are going to say it was. So USC down a point, down a set. Here, both teams trying to earn a trip to Kansas City where the national semifinals take place next week. We are the first of four regional finals volleyball all day on ESPNU, so don't go anywhere. Beautiful back set for Lickman. And Fanoi Moana makes a big statement there. That is a gutsy play from a freshman. Deciding to go ahead and take this miss hit over it was actually a, a block deflection that she decided I'm going to take it over. She read the defense not in position and she found the opening. And there she doesn't go to the jump serve like we saw in set one after that service error. Seven kills for the freshman. Who has a nice pass to lead to the point for Alexis Olgar. Communication from Kendall Bateman, their junior setter, number 12. She gets this pass is a little close to the net. It's great eye communication. And she and her hitters. Old guard down the middle. Here comes Lickman. Off the block. Cassidy Lickman, a senior setter out of Poway, California for the Cardinal. This is a player that is smart on and off the court, and the decision she has to make, shifting from becoming the setter and that mindset to becoming the hitter, it is just phenomenal. Jupiter gets the point and the lead for the USC. Way outside the block, not together. Alex Jupiter splits it between them. So athletic. She's so quick as well. Her athleticism allows her to get the shot she wants so often before the blue can get there. All tied up now for the Cardinal. And this is about what we expected. The teams know each other so well. And uh, Stanford won the first match 3-0. The second match was a 3-1. So USC making some progress against Stanford. And a touch at the net gives the side out to the Trojans. 
this second set after the loss in the first set for USC. So crucial playing best of five. You don't want to go down at the break, down 0-2. Put yourself in your best case scenario here. High outside, Kleinman buries it. Still just no answer for Alex Kleinman and just again to her size. She just gets above that approach again. The double block not there. She gets full approach when systems go into her. Really something. Stanford has been remarkable. And we have a double hit there. Stanford in the last 19 years are 61 and 3 in the NCAA tournament when they win the first set. So they have had remarkable success. And they haven't lost much this season. There are only three losses of the year, once to UCLA in a, a tough five-set match, and then twice to Cal. Yeah, they, they have a very difficult non-conference schedule, and then they hit Pac-10 play 11-3 and three on the season against ranked opponents. And that's a key wins against Texas and Penn State earlier in the season, so really tough schedule. You'll see all those teams coming up tonight. Penn State takes on Duke. Texas is in action, as is Cal against Washington in another Pac-10 matchup. As we see USC go on a little bit of a run now, and that is going to cause John Dunning to call a timeout for Stanford, the biggest lead of this second set. USC jumps out by four. They lead Stanford 11-8. They're down one set. Everyone's hiding something. What can we do to keep her quiet? These guys are ruthless. Someone's covering it up. It has to stop now. <laughs> Damages premieres January 5th on Channel 101, only on DirecTV. We are here at the regional final in Dayton, Ohio. The winner gets a trip to the national championship in Kansas City. And, you know, you've talked a little bit about these are like a batting average. Explain these hitting percentages to us. Well, the way you calculate it, it's kills, your number of kills minus your errors, and you divide it by the number of attacks. And that gives you your hitting percentage similar to baseball. Right now, you can see that Felon Benoit Moana hitting pretty well. 438. Your goal is to hit around somewhere around 300. And she's above 400 right now, getting it done. So USC really making a statement here in the second set. John Dunning calling a timeout, but they don't get the point afterward. And that will set up a serve from Alex Jupiter. Lineman tries again. Done a great job mixing up her swing. She brings the heat and then nice little soft, soft touch shots. And a double hit is called on USC side out for Stanford. And Holly, that was something that Alex Kleinman could not do last season. She had off-season shoulder surgery on her hitting arm. So last season, still wanting to play, but Coach Dunning said, you can play, but you cannot swing hard. So she always had to mix it up, take something off. And I think now it's really advantaged her because she learned that aspect of the game. Now the, now the big hitting game is there as well. She can mix it up. Coach Dunning said, you know, if she did that last year, if she brought the heat, we would take her right out. We wanted her to save her shoulder. As we see USC get another point and go up 13-9. 5-1 scoring run for the ladies from USC. I haven't seen many runs in this one. We knew it would be close. Kleinman makes him pay. She has been terrific here. Eight kills for the senior. So you step back a couple of steps. Again, the double block not getting there, and Alex Kleinman able to take advantage. Finding the seam right down that block. 
And here comes Stanford. Two straight points. Alex Kleiman coming in, their best server, 28 aces. Give her another one here. She's got that lofty floating kind of serve. Just catches that back line. Back row attack, Jupiter. Nice little change up from Williams, but USC's there. And off the block, the freshman again. Boy, she has been effective. She absolutely has. And so much pressure on this young player coming into USC, picked the number one player in the nation by prep volleyball. And she's had a lot to learn, a lot to live up to. Her entire family, just a group of athletes at high levels. Well, 18 times this season, she has scored in double figures in kills. She has been a big part of this USC success. And they are on top of Stanford, 15-11. Can the Cardinal make a comeback? Here comes Kara, looking stunning as usual. Who are you wearing? I'm wearing Tachikara's soft premium leather. It's the perfect blend of strength, beauty, and durability. The youngest star, Pepper, is making her way down the red carpet now. Pepper, you look adorable. What's your secret? I've lost a ton of weight, and I'm wearing more fun colors these days. Who's this? Turn the camera off. This guy's a fake. People choose 5-Hour Energy over 7 million times a week for lots of reasons. It's a nutritional supplement that really works. Its key ingredients can also be found in everyday foods like avocado, broccoli, bananas, or already in you. It contains about as much caffeine as a cup of the leading premium coffee, zero sugar, four calories. What's going to be your reason for choosing 5-Hour Energy? Its effectiveness? Its beneficial ingredients? There's only one way to know. Try it today. Stanford won the first set, but it's been more USC that looks like they found something here in set number two. They lead Stanford 15 to 11. Stanford down the Trojans twice this season, and Kleinman was the big reason. 27 kills, 15 in the second set. Except the second match. Uh, Mick Haley said they knew they had to make some adjustments. They were going to take some gambles with their defense and try to change it. And for John Dunning and Stanford, he said there's probably going to be a particular matchup that's going to work for them if they find it. And uh, these last several points, I think they've found it. So Foy, Foy Moana. We'll get her name right because she has been everything tonight. Ten kills now for the freshman. This is against the number two seed in the NCAA tournament. And she's there on the block. She's doing it all. We are going to see this player for many more years. So you and I need to start saying her name in our sleep. I think we will be after this. Look at this. Great defense. Number 13 up at the net. Look at the movement by the block. That was just her one on one, reading it perfectly. Williams. The freshman rises up for Stanford. Cuts it to a five point lead. And Gabrielle's the great libero in the serve for Stanford, one of their steady, steady servers on the season. 22 service aces. Williams again mixing it up. Two kills for the freshman. You saw this yesterday against Ohio State. Rachel Williams, number six, six the six-foot freshman. You know, this is a player that came in. Didn't really know much about her. And then she rattles off eight kills, hits 350. And that's what you've got to have, just multiple options. You've got to have those players that no one's thinking about. John Dunning told us before the match that they've had so much talent on this Stanford team. There hasn't been a single night where all six hitters are on. And he said, boy, wouldn't that be scary? <laughs> but they've done it in teams. You know, everybody focuses on climbing, but other players have had to step up, and she's doing it right now. Well, he's right. long on that hit. He was kind of hoping he'd see it here tonight. Right now, they haven't all been clicking at the same time, but as long as they get some kind of rhythm going. Now, let's see if the freshman stays down for her serve. She does. She jump served in the first set, but not here in the second. And another mistake there on that one, though. That one very close. And I, I think that Mick Haley's having her stay with it with the, uh, this type of serve because he wants the float serve against Sanford. Her jump serve puts a lot of topspin on it. 
Cassidy Lickman on the serve. Here's Jupiter. And she gets there, she does. Lickman saves it for the Cardinal. Back set. And they're saying that that was in. Tight call that time. Alexis Olgard, number one, at the last minute, you saw her shift her body to the left, and that allowed her to get a much better angle. She read the D up in the air, and she saw where they were, and that made that change in the air. Here's the freshman. She gets again another kill for Benoit Moana. The Pac-10. Freshman of the year. Look where she starts her approach, well behind the 10-foot line. It's everything behind it. This is a player that has gotten some help adjusting to the college level academically, as well as Division I volleyball. She's working on her conditioning. She's starting to see what the program at USC can do for her. And since she got going early in that first set, her fire and competitive nature out there has really changed the momentum here in this match. USC opening up a big lead over Stanford in set number two. Down the middle, but Kleinman is rejected. USC saw Kleinman. They knew she'd try to go to the middle there, and they were waiting for her with the triple block. Come together, put the hands over, great angle. Good pass from Ailes. The quick inside to Wolfpack. That's been effective for the Cardinal. Carly Wopat, her twin sister Sam is on the team. The Carly came in the number four recruit in the nation. Anna Benjamin checks in to serve for Stanford. Deceptive move from Bateman, but there is Ailes. And USC caught standing around. What a sneaky move. Gabby Ailes, just when you think for USC that you snuck one by him. Gabby Ailes, the senior libero for Stanford, comes sliding in. Mistake that time from Stanford. And Ailes, the all-time career digs leader in Stanford history, she shows that versatility. There you see her. She's wearing the dark jersey, the libero. She wears that opposite colored jersey in that Seth position. point now for USC. Not so fast. Stanford sticking around. And coming up, we've got all kinds of volleyball news for you. We'll give you a breakdown of this region, but we've got regional previews. Three regions to go coming up. Three tickets to the national championship on the line. We'll have all of that for you in the studio. Kara Kakuano, Jason Kutcher. And so that's a big change in momentum. USC pounds Stanford in the second set to tie things at a set apiece. We'll take a break, but first, USC making a big change there. And coach from uh, USC, Mick Haley, will stand by with us right now for a moment. And coach, what was the big difference in that second set? It seemed like a whole different team out there. Well, we were playing very well in the first set, but we had uh, we given up three aces. They're serving very tough, and uh, the the thing that uh, thing that helped us was we didn't give up any aces. Uh, we served a lot tougher, and uh, I thought. We took the uh, offense to them. That's something we haven't been able to do, so it worked well for us. You know, Mick, you told us earlier today that you try to recruit and get competitors, players that want to play. I just saw a different side of Fallon Fenoy Moana. Uh, what a competitor, and how did that energy kind of bleed over and kind of lift you guys there in set two? Well, she's always been competitive. She just has to get in the groove a little bit. We got her enough balls. She touched enough balls. She's, uh, she's ready to go now, but she'll always compete. I think you can count on that. What's something that you saw here from your team in set two that you can build on for the next set, Coach? Uh, I thought we looked pretty confident. I thought we, we understood exactly what Stanford was trying to do, and we're getting close to really being on it. So um, if they don't change too much, I think we've got a good chance here. All right. Well, thanks very much. We'll see you back here in just a minute. Now let's check in with our studio. Let's go to Kara Capuano, Justin Kutcher, and Elizabeth Moreau in the ESPNU studio. 
Kelly, thank you very much. Yes, we are inside our Sports Center Youth Studios. Elizabeth Moreau, former middle blocker for Butler. I'm Kara Capuano. And they just asked Coach Haley the question, so I'm going to pose it to you from an analyst perspective, Elizabeth. What was different between the first set and the second set as USC came back and won the second set? Well, in the first set, Stanford did a very good job of capitalizing on USC's unforced errors. They had four service errors US USC did in the first match. I think that was the difference. In that first set, though, Alex Kleiman, four kills. She's playing very consistent and smart right now. In the second set, though, I think that USC just came out with a lot more fierce and a lot more hunger. But Alex Kleiman, the stat that we were talking, I was telling you about earlier, that she doesn't play as well on the second night when she has back-to-back -back night games. I don't think that's the case tonight, although in the second set, she struggled a little bit. The leader on their team, I think coming into the third set, they just need to keep going to her, also doing a good job of uh, spreading the ball around on the right side with Spellman. And the difference between these two Pac-10 stronghold franchise, if you will, the programs, is that this year, Stanford is senior heavy, USC is freshman heavy, bright horizon, bright future there, and one of the players, Fallon Fonoya Moyana. Thank you for... I don't think I got it right, but she has had an outstanding match. What, what did she do from set one to set two to improve her ability? Well, she did a good job of just switching up her shots. Power to the deep corner, but she also, again, playing very smart as a freshman, tipping the ball over, roll shotting, but just using her strength. She's also been an incredible force on the outside, blocking, not only stuff blocking, but also getting the touch on the ball, which is exactly what USC needs to do to slow down Alex Kleiman. There are four teams from the Pac-10 Conference in the final eight, as we have our back-to-back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back regional finals here today on ESPNU. Next, we'll head out to the University Park Regional. That pits up Penn State against Duke. Then it's Purdue against Texas from Austin. And then the final match of the night, 11.30 Eastern, but that's okay because it's two West Coast teams. It's California, the seven seed against unseeded Washington. One thing that's pretty interesting about where we're at right now in the regional finals is this is the first time since seeding began that we don't have the number one team nor the number two. Florida fell to Purdue. Nebraska falls last night to Washington. And after that match, it got chippy between the two coaches, John Cook and Jim McLaughlin. What happened there from, your, from what you've heard? I've heard a lot of different things but I think it was just both of these coaches, very competitive natures. They've had a little bit beef over the past, you know, 15 plus years that they've been coaching. Uh, ball was called in that Nebraska thought was out. And I think that John Cook said something that he thought the ball was in. Something was said back and forth. There was shoving. Not a good situation. It's just heated. There's a championship and the chance to play for one on the line, including what's happening in Dayton.